Good evening. It's good to see each and every one of you here this evening as we uh, give thanks to our God for all of his blessings that he showered upon us. This evening we begin our worship with our opening hymn number 892, Come Ye Thankful People Come. We turn to page 151 for Divine Service Setting 1. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro it printed on our insert. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. These all look to you. When you gather it to them, they gather it up. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Do I have any children that want to come up for the children's message? All right. Well, good evening. Hey, I got good news for you, except for Kalia. I'm not going to make you guys talk tonight, all right? All right, but I'm going to have to have, ask you to raise your hand. Show me that you can raise your hand. Okay, excellent. So I want you to raise your hand on something that I say that you're thankful for. So if you're not thankful for it, don't raise your hand. Okay, we'll start. Raise your hand if you're thankful for your family. Okay. Raise your hand if you're thankful for Jesus. Good. So far, so good. All right. Raise your hand if you are thankful for teachers. Boy, too bad Mr. M's not here. You didn't raise your hand. You raised your hand even lower, Melanie. Nice. All right. Um, Uh-oh. Raise your hand if you're thankful for pastor. <laughs> Even lower, Melanie? Thanks a lot. All right. All right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for toys. Hold on. You guys aren't thankful for toys? Toys? Oh, all right. They think this is a trick question. All right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for friends. Okay. Oh, Melanie almost got her hand above her shoulder on that one. All right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for electronics. You better get your hand up way high, Eli. Yeah, okay. All right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for broccoli. Oh, more than I thought. I'm with you, Melanie, on that one, okay? Um. Raise your hand if you're thankful for toothpaste. Okay, all right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for a home. Uh, all right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for a bed. All right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for the movie Frozen. <laughs> all right. I knew that one wouldn't get everyone. Raise your hand if you're thankful for books. Okay. Oh, two hands for Kalia. Awesome. Okay. Raise your hand if you're thankful for venison sausage. Well, there was some reluctance. We got some. All right. Raise your hand if you're thankful for coffee. How about this one? We'll see. Kalia's just raising her hand on everything, all right? Raise your hand if you're thankful for putting the dishes away. We'll check with your parents later on that one. Raise your hand if you're thankful to sweep the floor. All right, this one. Raise your hand if you're thankful for homework. That's what I thought. You know, we ha and I haven't <clears throat> talked about clothes, haven't talked about sports, I haven't talked I haven't talked about a lot of things, right? We have a lot of things to be thankful for as we celebrate Thanksgiving. For God is the source of all of our good gifts. 
Every single one of them. Even those things we didn't raise our hand for, right? Like broccoli or putting the dishes away, unless you're Kalia, raise your hand for everything. Yeah. Um, even those, though, are blessings from God in different ways. You have a floor to sweep, a home to live in. Dishes to do means having food to eat. Homework means learning and growing. Broccoli means you have healthy food to eat. God blesses us in our favorite things and our least favorite things. Because God loves us and shows it every day, but most importantly shows it in Jesus, who died and rose for you. Let us give thanks to God for everything we have. Dear God, thank you for all of our blessings, those we love and enjoy, and those we sometimes aren't as appreciative. But most importantly, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks. You can return to your seats. Our Old Testament reading for Thanksgiving Eve comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 8, the first 10 verses on page 196 in your pew Bibles. As the people of God were preparing to enter the Promised Land, Moses reminds them of who was truly responsible for bringing them into this great land. It was the Lord God who led them to the Promised Land, and they were to keep the commandments that had been given to them by God. We read, the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that... ...is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes to us from 1 Timothy chapter 2, the first four verses, on page 1271. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that we are to pray for and give thanks for all people. This command includes kings and all in authority over us, even the people we don't like. And there's a simple reason for this. Because God desires all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Paul writes, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we continue with the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. And we read verses 11 through 19 on page 1121, the account of Jesus healing ten lepers, but only one returning. We read. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. 
And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue our worship by singing hymn 894, For the Fruits of His Creation. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I feel like this year, 2021, has been far from a perfect year. Who here would agree with me? Raise your hand. Okay, good. I'm not the only one. Not that I was expecting to be the only one. Um, so because of that reality, I want to ask you a question you hear often at Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for this year? But I want to do it differently. I want to hear different answers from you. Right? It could be something unexpected or something fun, but something different. Maybe it's something that you learned this year is or has been a blessing from God. So, and really, I'm hoping for fun. All right? Answer. So, in other words, family, friends, Faith, food, we'll throw the fifth F of Thanksgiving football in there, are not answers I'm looking for. We're thankful for our family and our friends and the like. Something just a little bit different. I'll give you two examples, okay? And so I'll start for you guys as you think about an answer, because you, you're going to have to answer here. All right, the first one is I have a little dice game I got a month ago called Fuse. I'd never heard of it before in my life. 
and I got to learn it from the designer of the game Fuse, and I came home with it, and the last few weeks, Eli, Eli and I have been playing it to death. We can't win, but we keep on playing. Those dice are mean. They really do hate us. Okay, But I'm thankful for the time that we get to roll dice and laugh about things and watch the timer explode on us when we don't win. Or I'm thankful that I get to pick Josiah up from school most days. And I get to ask him, so what did you do in school today? And he responds with a one-word answer. Stuff. <laughs> but I'm glad he answers with a one-word answer because that means he's still talking to me. So what fun or unique things do you have that you're thankful for tonight? Raise your hand. Come on, you've got to have something. Ken, all right. Yes, thankful for the chance to teach, even if it's two nights a week, right? Yeah, okay. What else? Go ahead, Sue. All right. <laughs> Thankful for the TV that occupies her time as he teaches. What else? Go ahead, Leroy. Oh, that's family, Leroy. That's cheating, but yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been quite a struggle, hasn't it? 40% of your eyesight back. Yes, yes, thanks be to God for that. What else? Good. Two healthy baby boys, all right. Yes, always good. Thanks be to God for healthy babies. Go ahead, Cheryl. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thankful that Gene has a boat and takes Cheryl fishing with him. How sweet. That's how you do it, Leroy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> what else? Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Marlene. Thankful for... All the choir singing together. Yes, thanks be to God. Especially after last year, right? Yes. Yes. Anyone? Oh, go ahead, Gene. Oh, yeah, thankful for, for the wood fundraiser, for everyone who shows up and help, for the wood that's provided, for the people who want wood. Oh, yeah, you would say that, Gene. Yes. Marty keeps talking back there. I'm waiting for him to raise his hand. Uh, I, I guess I'll say I'm thankful Marty's here because I know he's always talking during my sermon, but at least he's here. Yes. <laughs> he's trying to come up with an answer. Unbelievable. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, thank You know what, I, Fred, you owe her big time. I don't know how many wives say I'm thankful that my husband can go hunting still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I won't make the rest of you talk. Marty, you're off the hook in the back, okay? Um, but yeah, um, notice no one out here said anything fun or interesting is that they're thankful for politics or politicians. Right? It seems inevitable, isn't it? Very few people are thankful for politics. Sometimes I think the people who work in politics might not even throw that out there as being thankful for it. But Paul is clear in I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings, and all who are in high positions. Who are the kings and the people in high positions at Paul's time? 
none other than the politicians and those who would play in the politics game. In other words, if we put this into words for today, Paul's telling us we should pray and give thanks for our politicians and our politics. Now, I'm sure almost everyone here has their favorite politician, someone who you would stand up with, proud to listen to, and happy to vote for. I'm also sure that there's politicians out there that just mentioning their names, or maybe even throwing out their initials, would be like a four-letter word. You can't stand them and you wish they would just go away. Now, don't make the mistake that you think you just have to pray for intercede and give thanks for the good politicians, the ones you like. This includes all politicians, good and bad. Now, before you get on your high horse and you want to disagree with me on this point, I have to point something out to you. The ones in authority, the ones in high positions at the time of Paul, were probably the ones persecuting Paul and the Christians. Paul and Timothy both know the challenges of thanking God for their politicians, especially the ones who wanted to hurt them, or destroy them, or kill them, and the ones they loved and shared God's gospel with and cared for. The early Christians knew what those authorities had done and what they could do and the evil they were willing to do to a brother and sister in Christ. And yet Paul says, pray and give thanks for those kings and all in high positions. And he doesn't make a qualifier and say, only the ones who treat you nicely. He says, all who are in high positions. And it really reflects Jesus' teaching. Jesus says, love your enemies. Jesus doesn't mean when he says, pray for those who persecute you by praying that they get blown off the face of the planet. Rather, pray for their well-being. Pray for their salvation. Pray for their health, and the list could go on and on. To pray in the way Paul is calling you to pray in our text, in reality, is to make you more like Jesus. And to reflect that true gospel message of why Jesus came into this world in the first place. For it was Jesus who came into this world to save all people, Paul writes that God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus came to die for all people. People from both sides of the political aisles, even those at the extreme ends, and those stuck in the middle. Jesus came to die on the cross for your favorite aunt and your scary uncle. The gospel story is that Jesus loves all people no matter who they are. He came to love the cute, lovable people and the ugly, unlovable ones. Jesus came because people are sinners, including politicians, and that people will let politics and power and money get to their heads. They need someone like Jesus, just like we need Jesus. He came to die on the cross for all people. By God's grace, we are here giving thanks to God that each of us believes Jesus died on the cross for all people and for people like you. Think about what Jesus said on the cross in Luke's gospel as they were crucifying him, as they were mocking him, as they tortured him, as any word would have caused extreme pain just to speak a simple word, Jesus said a whole line. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As Jesus was dying on the cross for the whole world, by his words they tell the truth that even the ones torturing and killing him, he came to die on the cross for them and wants the Father to forgive them. 
Jesus embodied this whole love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And he did it when it mattered most. And shows the ultimate truth that God truly does desire to save all people. And when you pray like Paul commands, when you follow in Jesus' footsteps to pray for our persecutors, for our politicians, whoever it might be, then Paul tells us these two interesting things. That we may lead peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. How amazing it is that you can be pleasing to God through your faith in your prayer life. That as you pray for your family and friends, as you pray for those politicians, both the good ones and the bad ones, God is pleased to hear your prayers. That faith is pleasing to God. And as you pray for all those people, he gives you a peace and a godly life that can't be taken away no matter what happens next on the news or by what crazy thing is said by a politician or when someone might even physically hurt you. Or if 2021, I know we only got a month to go, keeps hitting you harder and harder. Your Christian faith makes a huge difference in everything you say, do, and pray. And that is something that could keep giving you thankful heart. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now join together in confessing our faith in the words in the Nicene Creed, which you can find on the last page of our hymnal. Please stand. We confess together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue our worship with our prayers. And in our prayers, we remember those listed in our bulletin. And we'll also pray for the families and the victims of the uh, accident at, uh, at the Waukesha Parade on Sunday. Lord God, we come before you today with thankful hearts, thankful for all your benefits and blessings. Most importantly, you've filled our hearts with your Holy Spirit that empowers us to trust in you into eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the nations, we come before you offering supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings for our government and all in high positions. We pray that you would provide wisdom to Joe, our president, Tony, our governor, and all our leaders so that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, we pray for your blessings on our life together as God's people here at Trinity, for our fellowship with other Christians throughout the world, for the missionaries planting new churches, and for our unity and doctrine in life. And we also give you thanks for the work at Trinity Lutheran School. Lord, in your mercy. 
Lord, our great healer, give to each of us the ability to continue to fight sickness and disease. Hear our prayer of healing for all who suffer of illness of body or mind, especially for Marcy, Myron, Larry, Helen, Jerry, Lois, Eileen, Bernie, Ken, Shirley, Bridge, Marion, Joel, Kay, and Iona. That his good and gracious will be done even during sickness, pandemic, and suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, continue to give us thankful hearts that we may not forget the poor and those in need, so that we may supply from our abundance those in want, and that you would bless the tithes and offerings we bring in gratitude for all God's gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, be with all of us in our vocations and occupations, that we may demonstrate a peaceful life to others, that we may serve others through the gifts you've given us, and that we can share your good news with those around us. We especially pray for the unemployed, the underemployed, and the abused, that you would provide what they all need in their times of need. Lord, in your mercy. Most merciful Lord, with compassion you hear the cries of your people in great distress, especially those who suffer physically, emotionally, and spiritually in the aftermath of the events in Waukesha. Be with all who now endure affliction and calamity, and comfort the families of those who mourn, those who died in this tragedy. Bless the work of those who bring rescue and relief, help and healing to those who are broken and bruised. Grant the pastors and people of our congregations in the area to be a bright light of hope in the midst of such darkness. Enable us to aid and comfort those who are suffering in our own community. They may find renewed hope and purpose as we point to this and future generations to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. In all things, O Lord, grant us grace to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought but to honor you above all and to love our neighbors as ourselves. On our own we have nothing that will endure, but you have granted to us all things in Christ and the life that does not end. Hear your people for the sake of and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, with whom, in whom, and through whom all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our offering. We turn to page 159 for our offertory. Please stand.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should all time and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear us and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the elevating sacrifice of his body and its blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink its blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast and the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayer. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
we turn to page 164 for our post communion canticle, Thank the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor on you and give you peace. We remain standing for our closing hymn, 809, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
please be seated. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here.